Hello lovelies, Nightshade here, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, we're going to be covering my top 12 tips before you start playing Infinity Nikki. As somebody that has played this game several times already, there are things that I learned through each of my playing journeys. I definitely wanted to make sure to pass the information along to help you through your gameplay. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Number one, starting off with do not explore until you have at least the five main ability outfits. This is crucial because there are certain things that won't be visible until you have these outfits. By the time that you get to the first town where your quest commences, you'll already have the purify and floating outfit. The next three outfits that you will get are the grooming, the bug catching, and the fishing outfit. All of these ability outfits are crucial because there are special whim stars that you can only get by fishing, grooming animals, or catching a flying butterfly. If you start exploring before you have these outfits, you won't actually be able to see the animal, the fish, or the butterfly in the areas where they're located, which would mean completely missing out on getting them. Number two. Collect it all. Collect all plants, bugs, and fur that you can. You don't need an ability outfit to collect the various plants or fruit that are around on the map, but you will need the bug catching outfit and the animal grooming outfit in order to get these other items. Anytime that you see a cute little animal, groom it. Anytime that you see a bug, catch it. All of this will be useful throughout your game journey. Number three, do not attempt the gold gotcha until you have enough for a ten pool. I cannot stress this one enough because whenever you first start the game and you walk up to this gold gotcha, it gives you a discounted pool. Mind you, I don't know if they will have a mechanic once the game releases where it resets daily like it does in some of their other games. But in the event that they don't end up doing this, just make sure that you have enough gold to do this 10 pool. Number four, double jumping. Double jumping has been the bane of everyone's existence so far. In every beta that I played, I noticed how everyone was complaining about the double jumping because it was a hard mechanic to grasp. Some people would not be able to master it. It took me several gameplays till I actually felt confident in doing the double jump and even then I would still struggle one or two times. The best advice that I can give you is to get a running head start. Always make sure that you're a little ways apart from the actual place that you're trying to get to. So you're going to walk then jump then while you're up in the air you're going to jump again on mobile the jump button was pretty much on your screen so it's self-explanatory you would just tap once and then tap again once you're in mid-air on pc it's the space bar so you're just gonna press the space bar and once you're in mid-air once again press on the space bar now for the playstation there was a bit of controversy as far as the control buttons were concerned so that is subject to change until official release Number five, Bling Esling. So this Esling is one of the many enemies that you will find in game. He has an official name, but I totally forgot it. So we're just going to call him the Bling Monster. This Bling Monster drops 3000 Blings each time that you defeat it. It's scattered through different parts of the map, so make sure to always pin its location because it does reset daily. However, Whenever you're attacking, make sure that you attack as fast as possible because he will end up disappearing after a certain amount of time if you do not strike fast. Number six. So one of the many luxuries of the game is that bling resets daily. Bling, as you might have already seen in my previous things to know video, is the currency of the world. So if you like to have a nice stash, whether for the gotcha or just to have enough blings to craft all your different outfits, make sure to pin bling locations on your map. Number seven, talking about bling, on your tutorial journey, you will find this area on the map that has hidden bling behind some of the ruined pillars. Make sure to collect the bling because if you skip it, there is no going back. This bling will definitely help give you a boost and a head start on your currency collection journey. 
I'm telling you because honestly, I missed it the first two playthroughs. At first, I literally thought that there was nothing to collect. Number 8. Stamp Locations In the beginning story quest, you will receive an in-game camera. This in-game camera will not only be for taking photos with friends or just aesthetically pleasing pictures in the game, but it will also serve another purpose. That purpose will be to take photos of certain locations the game is asking for. Sometimes, you'll probably find yourself in a rush and too busy to complete this. Make sure that you pin these locations on the map. The way that you know that you've actually found one of these locations is because you'll get this small pop-up on the middle left-hand side of your screen indicating the location. It'll be random things like old swing or graffiti wall, stuff like that. You'll know it when you see it, and as well here, I am circling it, just so you get an idea. Number 9. Dungeons. For this one, you get two for the price of one. The first tip is for all of my non-grindy people. So if you're the type to want to get in, get out, basically just do what you're there to do, then make sure that you get all the dues of inspirations and the whim stars available in your dungeons on your first run. Unfortunately, as of the last beta, there is no map in the dungeons, but it does tell you how many whim stars and dues are available in each dungeon. So you can all Always base yourself on that when you're exploring. Otherwise, you're going to have to do everything all over again from the start. For my people who like the grind, the second tip is for you. Each of the dungeons on the map are actually replayable. You can go back in every day and claim blings that are in the dungeon. So if for whatever reason, you actually didn't get everything on your first go around, you can always try multiple times a day. Obviously, the blings won't reset each time you go in. It's just reset daily. <laughs> you actually do get a good lump sum of blings, so definitely keep that in mind. Number 10. Set off. Embark on a whimsical journey celebration event. If you haven't done this already, there is a web event on Infinity Nikki socials such as Facebook and X running from November 14th to December 15th where you can complete certain tasks in order to unlock in-game rewards such as currency, materials, and exclusive items. All you have to do is log on with your Infold account, the account that you will be using to play the game, and complete the task that they have set. I'll include the link down below for the event in my comments. Once you log in, you'll be greeted with this screen. On this screen, you have two tabs, Whim List and Lucky Draw. Once you go into Lucky Draw, this is what will come up. Keep in mind, Lucky Draw is basically just for fun. So simply type in your name, press on claim, and this is what you'll get. If you're happy with your lucky draw, share it with your friends, or you can also just draw again. As you can see, I did indeed receive another, and this is actually the original one that I had gotten. Now let's go ahead and move on to what's really important. When you go into whim list, it will give you a list of rewards that you can claim once you have a certain amount of points. You can actually claim all of the gifts above simply by inviting friends to pre-register. The pre-registration process is very simple, very painless. If you're going to invite a friend, you're simply going to click on go and your invite link will pop up. Simply copy the link and send it to your friends. Once your friend receives and clicks on your link, this is a screen that will pop up. It will say, use the exclusive link now to pre-register for Infinity Nikki. And they will have to click on accept invitation. Mind you, if they have already created an account, this will not work. You can choose to log in via Apple, Google, or Facebook. You can also simply manually enter an email address. If you're going to click on one of the options below, check read and agreed to the user agreement privacy policy, and then it'll take you over to your preferred login method. Once that is selected, the pre-registration screen will pop up. It will ask you, how are you going to play? Is it iOS, Android, PC, or console? 
and then you'll have to enter your email. Once you finish typing in your email, you'll pre-register now and you'll receive confirmation that you have successfully registered. Your friend will then have gotten an additional 20 points. So now let's go ahead and talk about what these rewards that you will be getting for this event actually are. For 40 win points, we have 10,000 bling. We have 50 thread of purity and 50 shiny bubbles. Bling, as you already know, is the currency of the world. Thread of purity is an outfit crafting material. You literally need this in order to craft every single individual piece of clothing that there is, every outfit. Shiny bubbles is what you'll be using in order to upgrade your stats for clothing. Now, as for the Eurekas, as you notice, they have different body parts, your head, hands, and your feet. These Eurekas can be equipped as accessories, and they're actually animated, so they will float or just have this special effect added to them. Without making it too complicated, Eurekas are also going to help your overall styling power score. And as for Shining Particle, Shining Particle is what you'll be using in order to upgrade your Eurekas. Just like your outfits, your Eurekas will also be able to be upgraded just so you can get that extra boost. Number 11. 85 pieces of clothing. This is a requirement for the second main story quest. I'm bringing it up ahead of time only because you can never be too prepared. I was super caught off guard because if you're not really exploring, you won't have so many pieces of clothing. If you're following my chess guide, you should have several clothing designs that you can craft that will help your closet grow. As well, visiting all the shops in Florawish and purchasing all the items available in them will definitely help you out. Number 12, Run Pear Pal. Run Pear Pal is going to be a game within your game. This game's sole feature is to actually help you pass the time in game. For instance, in this particular setting, I needed to wait for a quest that was only available throughout a certain part of the day. Here, I simply fast forwarded the time to that specific hour, and once my game was over, it was already the time for my quest. In my 12 things to know video, I mentioned how the weather does not have an effect on your gameplay. A few of you who played the beta like I did mentioned right away that you weren't able to complete certain quests whenever it rained. While admittedly, I should have phrased that better because I meant it in the sense of as I'm out walking and exploring, I'm not going to slip and fall because it's raining or I'm not going to get struck by lightning just by standing around like you do in Breath of the Wild. The idea is to use the Run Pair Pal game in order to fast forward to a point in time when it's not raining. So there you have it, guys. That is it for today's video. I hope that you actually found these tips useful and that they help you through your gameplay journey. Let me know what the biggest tip for you was. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And as well, if you have any useful tips, feel free to include them in the comments. As usual, thank y'all so, so much for watching and I'll see y'all later. Bye!